want to be able to create a Discord bot that allows users to store data in a database by writing a very simple command that allows any data to be stored in a database. Well then, this is the video for you. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to set up your own database and how you can get your own Discord bot to store data in it. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded, however I'm back now, back for good. New videos will be coming out every week from now on. But anyway, let's get into today's video. So today, as you've just seen from the introduction, we're going to be looking at how we can get our bot to store data. And well, there are many ways in which you can get your bot to store data. You can set up a database and store data in that. Or maybe you can go a simpler approach and you can just create like a very basic like JSON file and just store data to that. Or even simpler than that, you can literally just create a TXT file, a text file and store data in that. So as you can see, it's basically three separate ways in how you can get your bot to store data. But today, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be getting our bot to store data in a database. The reason that I've decided that we're just going to go straight into database and not have a look at like JSON or TXT files is because, well, when your bot, if it becomes really big and many people use it, the JSON file and the TXT file are just, they just won't be suitable for many people. That's why you need a database. A database can support literally thousands of millions of users using it. Whereas a JSON file and a TXT file, that can't support many people. It just got really, really slow. And so that's why I've decided we're just going to go straight into looking into, into how we can use a database with our Discord bot. So let's do it. Let's get straight into how we do it. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to set up a database where we can store the data to. And well, there's two ways you can do it. You could set up a database in the cloud. So for example, you could use a platform like AWS, which is built by Amazon, and create a database on here. And then your database would always be online and in the cloud. This is a very good way in which you could do it. However, today we're not going to be looking at how we can create a database and use a database that is stored in the cloud. Today we're just going to be looking at creating a local database, one that's stored on the machine in where your Discord bot is actually running. So where your code is running on your machine, we'll also have a database running next to it, which your bot can communicate with. So how do we set up this local database? Well, there's quite a few ways in which you could do this. There's many services out there on the internet in which you could like install a very uh, install a database and follow through some steps to set it up locally. However, in my opinion, the best way to set up a local database is to use a service called MAMP. MAMP is a service that is used for like local web development, like when you're building websites. However, what it has is it has a database, a part of its packages, which you would typically use in this circumstance to help build your website. However, we're going to use it to help run our database for our Discord bot. And the reason why I've decided to use MAMP and to teach you guys how to do it using MAMP is just because it is such a simple setup. All you literally have to do is just download it and click a start button, which you'll see in a second. And that's all you have to do to get the database up and running. However, if you were to install like other online services that are specifically just for databases, then that just goes through so many more steps. And it's just way more complicated than it needs to be. So that's why we're going to be using MAMP. So let's do it. So what you want to do is come over and click free download. Then you want to select the um, operating system which you are using. So in our case, we're using Windows because that's what we're using. So you want to go ahead and click it and it will start to download as you can see here in the top right. Wait for it to download and then we can open it. So MAMP is installed and it has opened into the setup wizard. So what we want to do is just literally follow the steps and install it. So of course you want to go next and we don't want to install MAMP Pro. MAMP Pro is like the um, paid version. We do not need that in the slightest. So untick MAMP Pro and leave the install Apple Bonjour um, ticked because you want that installed as well. So go ahead and click next. Then you want to agree to the license and make sure you read all of this just to make sure you're happy with it all and click next. 
Then you want to choose a location where you want to install it on your computer. All basic stuff. So let's just choose a location. Then just follow the steps through next, next and install. Very simple and I'm sure you've already done this before when installing other applications. So let's wait for it to install and then we can start using it. So it's installed. Great. Let's go ahead and open it up. When it's opened up, it will look exactly like this. And all you want to do is go ahead and click start servers. Give it a few seconds and you'll see here on the right, these two here will become green ticks and that's what you want. Sorry, not ticks, green circles. Once you've got both green circles there, you want to go ahead and click open web start page. And it'll bring you to a web page in your browser, which will look very similar to this. What you want to first do is come ahead and go to tools and you want to click PHP my admin and open that in a new tab. A new tab will open and it will look like this. And there you go, you've done it. You have set up your own database. This here is a database and this is running locally on your computer and your Discord bot will be able to access it. However, we need to actually create the specific database in which we will store data in. And I'm assuming you already know from the name of a database, a database is a place where we can store data. So we want to create a database. So to do this, you want to come over to the left hand side and click new. A menu will pop up like this and you want to come over to database name and give it a name. You can name it whatever you want, but just for this case, I'm going to call it YouTube underscore bot like that. You can maybe give it the name of your Discord bot or whatever you really want. It doesn't really matter. Then you want to go ahead and click create. There you go. Our database has been created. And you can see it's taken us to a page where it says create table. And what a table is, let me just give you a quick brief overview. In any database, you have tables. And tables are what you store your data in. And you can have many different tables. So the way we're going to be using tables is, is for each server that your bot is on, that server will have a unique ID. So we will create a table for each server and inside of that table for that specific server, the user will store their data, if that makes sense. So each server that your bot is on will have its own table. And then inside of that table, whenever, you, whenever the user runs a command to store data, it will store it in that specific table corresponding to their server, their server ID. Hopefully that makes sense. And so this creating table process will be completely autonomous as you'll see when we get into writing the code. And it will make a lot more sense when we start to write it. And speaking of writing code, we can actually start writing some now. So then, I've just created a very basic slash command function in which we're going to be creating this command. And in this video here, we're going to be creating the command to store data. And in the next video in this Discord bot series, we're going to be creating a command to receive data. Hopefully that makes sense. And when I say create data and receive data, what I mean by that is whether a user can create data and store it in a table and the user can receive the data that they've stored in, in the database, in the table, in, the, in two separate commands. So we're going to be creating the command to store the data in the database. So you can see I've already created it with the store info name and given it a very brief description. I'm not going to go over now how slash commands work because I've already explained all of that in a previous video. And hopefully you already understand how that works. So the first thing that we need to do is we want to get the ID of the server. The server in which that Discord bot is currently running where the user has executed this command. So to do this, all we have to do is type guild is equal to interaction.guild.id. That's all we need to do to get the ID, the specific ID of that server. And that's what we're going to be using to create the table name, as I mentioned earlier. So we can now actually get into the exciting bit of actually writing the code to connect to the database. And to connect to a database, we need to create and import a new Python package. And this Python package is called MySQL Connector. So all this Python package does is just allows your code to connect to the database. It basically just helps us do that. So we want to copy this command here 
and I will leave a link or I'll write this command in the description so you don't you can just go ahead and copy and paste it from there and you want to head to your terminal and you want to paste it and then go ahead and install it however I've already installed it so I'm not going to go and run that command now once you've installed it and it's gone successfully you want to come to the top and we need to import that package so we want to do import mysql dot connector then we need to do is go uh, we need to write one more import we need to do from mysql dot connector import error there we go we've now imported the two python packages that we're going to need for this video this is all we need to do in terms of the python packages now we go ahead and write the code to connect to the database so we're going to create a try which is a basic python syntax hopefully you know what that means then we're going to create the code to connect to that local database that we just created this database right here so to do this we're going to type connection is equal to mysql dot connector dot connect open and close brackets there we go now if we head back to that start page that we originally opened the map start page that we are using for our database on this main page here if you scroll down you can see here we've got a mysql section and these are all the details for how we can connect to that database that local database running on our computer so the username the password and the host and the port however we're not going to be needing the port all we need today is the host name the user and the password so make sure you've noticed this down and we can head back to the code inside of the code we're going to first define the host so that's what we saw so in our case in my case it was localhost and in your case as well it will be localhost then we want to define the database that we are connecting to right so that was the name that you gave it when we were creating it so in my case it was youtube bot so youtube underscore bot and you want to go ahead and write it with whatever name you gave your database then we're going to write user is equal to and that was the name that we just saw on that previous page so in my case it was root now the password and again in my case that was root there we go we have now written the code that will actually connect our bot to our database great that now works so what we want to do now is we want to create we want to write some code that will create a table for that server that that bot is currently running in that this command was executed from so and the way we're going to write this code is is each time this command this command is run it will attempt to create a table however let's say another user has already run this command in this specific server and a table already exists well then our code will detect that that a table already exists and it won't create a new one if you see what i'm saying so if this is the first time that this command is being run in this specific server then it will create a table with the name of that id of that server that's why we that's why we had to define guild up here however if it's already been run by another user or by the same user but previously earlier in time then it won't create another table hopefully that makes sense so let's write the code. So to do this, we want to do my SQL underscore create underscore table underscore query is equal to. And now we need to write the query. What query is, is it's SQL language. Depending on your views, you might not call it a language. In my opinion, I'm going to call it a language and i love sql and what sql is if you don't know what sql is it's basically the language behind databases it's how you write code but in database language that a database will understand and will be able to do what you ask it to do but in its language hopefully that makes sense you don't need to know too much right here because i'm just going to explain it all but i recommend it if you want to in your free time have a look at it it's very very interesting so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly speed run and write the code for this and then i'm going to go through it afterwards as, as as that's a lot better way for me to explain how it works and then you can go ahead and just copy it word for word what i've written so i've gone ahead and written this query and this is the query the command that will create the table in our database so it's quite self-explanatory to begin with so let me explain so we're going to create a table and we want to give it the name of db because 
DB, so that stands for database underscore, and then the ID of that server that this command is being run in. That links to this command up here. So we're creating a table with the name of DB underscore, and then the unique ID of that server. Now, the bit after here is we are creating columns, three different columns to be specific. But what actually is a column? Well, a column in a table is basically just, think of it as like headers in a table. So we've got a header called ID, a header called user, and a header called message. And the rows under it relate to values that the user can input. So for example, so let's say we've got a user that in inputs a message. So it would be ID one, the name of the user, and then the message in one row. And if another user was to go and do it, then there'd be another row below it. If that makes sense, hopefully the image on screen will make it a lot clearer in understanding what I'm explaining. So we're creating a table with the name ID, user, message, and primary key. I'm not gonna go into detail now about what not null means or auto increment or varchar, as that's just not really that suitable for this video, but just think of it very briefly as just the parameters for what can be entered into each column. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And you won't even need to know what any of this means at all. Let, but let me quickly just say another one thing now. Let's say you're creating a bot and you need more than, and you need more column headers. Maybe you need one that has, I don't know, let's say you wanted to have one with, with the column header of, I don't know, um, timetable. So how would you do that? Well, you just copy it and paste it and literally rename it to timetable. That's just how you create more columns. So if you need more columns for the purpose of your bot, that's how you do it. So literally just copy it, copy and paste it and rename this first thing, uh, first name here. So like message to whatever you need it to be. Great. Hopefully that makes sense. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the connection to the database, like to actually initialize the connection and to create a table. So to do we're going to do cursor is equal to connection dot cursor open and close brackets. Then we're going to do result is equal to cursor dot execute open and close brackets and then MySQL create table query and we can put it in here. So what we've just written here is we've basically just said we want to make the connection using this connection variable here to the database and we just want to create a table with these specific parameters. Great. And then what we could do is we could just print a very basic message to explain, to, to just let us know that the table has been created. So if the table has successfully been created, then we will get this message in the terminal. So now we've written that, we can write the code to, to say uh, if the table already exists, then we don't want to do anything. We don't want to create another table of the same name. So to do this, all we do is come down here and we write accept mysql.connector.error as error colon. Then we want to type print and then we just want to write the message failed to create create table in MySQL and then we want to just define the error. So we do it exactly like this. There we go. So these tiny two lines of code, this here will basically detect if there's another table and if there's another table, then it will not create another one. I explained all of that earlier and why in this video, why we needed that. So great, we've done, we've, we've written the code to create a table and to detect if a table already exists and if it does exist, not to create another one. So what we're gonna do now is write the code to actually input the user's input into the table. So we first want to take the user's input from the command. And to do this, in our defining our function up here, all we need to do is at the after our interaction, we want to write message colon string. And this interaction here, this bit here, this is, I explained all of this in a previous video. So if you're just joining this video now and you haven't seen any of my previous videos and you don't know what like slash commands means or interaction, go back and watch those videos. It will explain exactly what each of these mean. With this message string here, what we're doing is we're just taking in the user's input and the user's input is what we're going to be storing in our database. So let's write that code. 
So we're going to come down here and we want to type finally. And below this, we're going to do if the connection to a database is underscore connected like this, then we want to run some code. So the first thing we do is we're just going to define the name of the table, the name of the table of the server. So to do that, all we do, and we're going to store that in a variable. So to do this, we're just going to do table is equal to db underscore and then just string guild. So that was the name of the table that we created here. So we're just basically taking this name and storing it in a variable. Now, we're going to write another query like we did up here. But in this case, we're going to be writing a query to insert data into the database. So to do this, we're going to first define the variable mysql underscore insert underscore row underscore query. And we're going to set it equal to this. We're going to write the code. That we're going to write the query to insert the data into the database. So we're going to type insert into, then space, and then we want to put define that table name that we just created up here. So table, and now we need to define the columns in which we're going to be inserting this data into. And these columns are these columns up here. And so we're going to write those columns in this in these curly brackets here. So user and message. You might be thinking right now, why didn't I write one for ID or primary key? Well, what ID and primary key are, these will auto be assigned when we add any data into the database. So what the ID is, so let's say the first ever person to add to store some data in a database from that server will be ID one, the next person will be ID two, the next person will be ID three, and so on and so forth. That's why we're not defining ID or primary key in these curly brackets here, because it will be auto done by us by the database. That's why it's super clever. So all we need to define in terms of the column names is the user and the message. And now we need to define the values that we're going to be inserting into the table. So in our case, the user and the message. So to do this, we're going to type values, and then we're going to use open and close brackets, and we're going to use some Python syntax, which hopefully you know, which basically allows us to define the variables outside of this query. And we're going to define these variables in a separate command. My SQL underscore insert underscore row values is equal to, so the first one is we want to define the user. So we're going to do string interaction dot user. And the second one we want to define is the message that the user has given us to store in the database. And that's literally the message our object up here. So we can literally just type message. And what this Python syntax, if you don't really know what it does, is it's basically going to insert these two into uh, these two here. So the first one, this percentage S will represent the username. And the second percentage S will represent the message. Hopefully that makes sense and you understand that. So we've now written the query and the values that we want to be inserting into the query. We just need to write the code that will execute this in the database. And to do this, all we need to do is do cursor dot execute. And then we can literally just copy these into this bracket. So MySQL query and MySQL insert row values, both into these curly brackets here. Now, the bit after here, we just need to do connection dot commit like that. Great. So that code here will insert whatever value the user's written in its this message object into the database, into the table more specifically. So what we could do now is just write some code to return a message to the user to say it has been successful. So we learned how to do this in previous episodes. So await interaction dot response dot send underscore message. And then we can write a message. So for example, I have stored your message for you. There we go. Let's write that. So we've now sent the message back to the user to say it's been successful. So finally, what we need to do now is close the connection with the database. So to do this, all we have to do is do cursor dot close and connection dot close. Both with a curly bracket, uh, a curly brackets afterwards. And then we can just write a little print object just to tell us in the terminal that the MySQL connection 
has been closed. And the reason that we need to close the connection each time is just mainly for security reasons, just other reasons, which I won't go into now, is just after each time we open a connection to the database, we always have to close it at the end. So make sure you always have your close, close um, code at the end of any function when you're connecting to any database anywhere. So that's it. That's everything we need to insert some values into the database. So let's try it out and let's hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have any errors. And when we run it, and hopefully when it works, hopefully it will all come together. And if you haven't understood anything previously, hopefully this will pull it all together. So let's run it and let's test it out. So inside of our test server, we're going to go ahead and we're going to access the store info command. And we're going to type the message that we want. So let's just say, let's just type the message, please subscribe. And because you should be subscribed if you aren't already, it really helps me out a lot. So let's try it. Hopefully when we click enter, it will respond with the message saying successfully inserted, like stores your message, what we wrote. So fingers crossed. No, so there's definitely an error somewhere as it's not responded correctly. And I found the very stupid and silly mistake that I made. Here, using this Python syntax of percentage sign s, it has to be a lowercase s for it to work. So now, when we rerun our code, it will work. So let's try that again. So if we run our command of store info and we give it the message of whatever you want, so in my case, please subscribe because you need to be subscribed. And when we hit enter, hopefully it responds with the message, I have stored your message for you. So great, it has worked. And let's and let me show you what it's done in the database. Here in the database, if we refresh the page, you can see here. Look, it's created the, the, a table with the name DB and the, and then the ID of our development server. And if we go into it, you can see here. Look, it's inserted the message that we wrote. So please subscribe and the name of the user who wrote it. So in my case, me. So great, it has successfully worked. And I hope you can see here what I meant about the ID being automatically created. So as that was the first ever message sent to that server, it was given the ID of one. So if I was to send another message, actually, let's do that. If I send another message, you can see, and it will be given the ID of two. As you can see here, look, two. And it will just repeat itself down and down and down for infinite amount of values. So it worked. We have successfully stored some data that the user has given us in a database. Wow, how cool is that? And you can apply this to any scenario or situation that you want. You might want to store other completely different types of information. You might want to, you might want to store a date or you might want to store email addresses. You might want to store passwords. You might want to store, I don't know, some sort of survey form in a database. Whatever you think can be stored, can be stored in a database. And if you want different column headings, like user and message, if you want it to be something different that suits for what you're creating, then just change it here where we initially create the table. Create it for, change it to whatever you want it to be. And then make sure if you do change it here, change it down here as well, because you have to be inserting the right data into the column. But we've done it, we've successfully created a bot that stores data in a database. So that's the end of today's video. But in our next video, I'm going to be showing you how to write a command to retrieve all of that data from a database and show it to us in Discord. So we're going to be writing a command to extract all of that data and show it to the user. So hopefully you're excited for that and stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss that video. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps it out in the algorithm. I'll catch you all in my next video. See ya!